Welcome back Diablo 4 fans, today we continue our easy to follow guides on Diablo 4 Endgame. Now if you're enjoying the series and want to keep up to date with all the Diablo 4 content and news, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, it really does help out the channel and allows me to continue to build guides and keep you all in the loop for the happenings of Diablo 4. So today we are covering off each of the artisans within Diablo 4. To start off with, we are going to have a look at the blacksmith. So this is where you salvage all of your items by clicking one of those buttons, and you can directly salvage something within your inventory by clicking this. You're also able to repair all your items. So once you die, you lose 10% of your ability of your items. You come back here, and this is where you repair them. And this is where you also upgrade your weapons. So if you put place an item in there, it tells you the material cost, and it tells you how much it is to upgrade. You can upgrade an item if it's a sacred item or ancestral item up to five times. If it's just your normal rare, it'll just go up to three like, three times. So you can check where your materials are by going on to the materials and stats tab and then going on to the briefcase looking one. And you can just scroll down and tell us you what you have currently. So next up we have the jeweler. This is where you can upgrade your gems to the highest level that you can get. And yeah, it's exactly like Diablo 3. Not really much to explain here. You can unsocket an item. Obviously exactly the same as Diablo 3. This is where it differs. You can now actually put a socket on an item. So you don't need the uh, Ramaldini's gift anymore. This is you just place an item in. And you add a socket based on the material that you've got. Which is the scattered prisms. You can also upgrade your jewellery exactly the same as you could in black Blacksmith. But this is just for your jewellery. So upgrade. And you can upgrade your jewelry to level four. So a new artisan for Diablo 4 is the Cultrist. This is where you can create sort of legendary items on using aspects as well. And the way this works is if you put a rare item in there, you select your codex of power. Uh, let's go with piercing cold. It tells you how much of your material costs and your Veil Crystals and how much money it costs. You produce it and then it creates a new legendary item for you. It's actually a really different way of working to create legendaries. Um, you're better off doing this when you have sort of sacred items rather than sort of just random rare items. Wait for sacred or ancestral items. So covering off extracting aspects. In Diablo 3 you had Canai's Cube where you would extract a legendary power and then it would go into the cube and you'd be able to select your items. Diablo 4, that's very different. So what we've got now is aspects. So when we start creating our aspects or imprinting aspects, we can actually take them off items as well. So once we've got this, we've got the Greaves of Fortune, we would take the aspect of fortune out of that item. It only costs gold and we can apply it to another item then by going through this same process. Crafting sigils, once you've unlocked Nightmare Difficulty and completed your first Nightmare Dungeon, you'll be able to craft sigils. So you can craft anything from up to a 1 to a level 100 tier sigils. And the only cost here is monetary cost and sigil powder. That's all it is. You just create them and then you'll unlock a new Nightmare Dungeon. Salvaging sigil, this is how you get your sigil powder. So salvage in your sigils and you will get your sigil powder. Pretty straightforward. And that tells you how many you get. The higher the tier, the higher the cost. If it's gone from sacred to ancestral, you'll get more powder. And finally, enchant an item. So if you wish to re-roll a metric or a RNG on an item, you will come to this point. And again, there's certain costs, materials and monetary costs that you now we have our alchemist. So the alchemist allows you to upgrade your healing potion. So every level that you upgrade, 1, 10, 20, 30, 45, 60, 70, 80, 90, you will upgrade your healing potion. So it starts off with 17 life to 35%. And then, you know, I'm currently on 255 life instantly and 35% of your maximum life over three seconds. And it goes right up to 1,274 life. 35% of your maximum life over three seconds and all this does have is cost to monetary costs and then materials that for each of those levels you can then craft elixirs so elixirs are really important and really powerful things to use especially if you know the type of monster or the type of affliction that you're going into a nightmare dungeon with 
you can apply the elixir to counteract what the afflictions are. It also gives you a nice 5% experience for 30 minutes on these as well. Refining resources. So we, when you're going around and you're gathering a lot of resources, you can then sort of upgrade or gather your materials into different types of material. Pretty straightforward. Not really much to go into here. And then finally, crafting incense. So incense are things that increase strength by 25 for every nearby player or 200 armor for every nearby player last 20 minutes so they are the same really as your elixirs they just give you a different type of boost and then finally we have the vendor the prayer of curiosities this is where you use your ovals now you collect your ovals by opening chests completing dungeons they drop randomly sometimes as well and this is kind of your uh, random item piece where you will get a random item for the cost of the obbles. Very similar to blood shards in Diablo 3. So you'll be able to select and hopefully you get oh, any, any item. Can be a legendary, can be a rare, can just be like a magical thing. So you'll be able to find all of the artisans in most of the major towns. I'm currently in Overstrad and the symbols are blacksmith, you've got your alchemist, you've got your occultist, and then you've got your jeweler there, you've got your alchemist there, and this one here is the purveyor of curiosities. So that's it. It's they're really straightforward. I wanted to put this guide in as sort of a level of completeness. This is not saying that Diablo 4 doesn't explain these very well. This is just for completeness of all of the guides that we're producing today. So Thank you very much for your time today. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. If you really want to watch more about Diablo 4, I'll be producing more and more content as the weeks go by. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you again soon.